Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Carlos, and on this channel, what we're doing is we're learning how to do storytelling by using animation and video. You haven't heard from me in a little while because I've been working on a story time animation. Pro Player left me a message on one of the previous videos that I did about lip syncing. So the first lip syncing video that I made was showing you guys how to use the functionality within Adobe Animate to do the auto lip syncing. And then after that, you guys were asking, how do you get the jaw and mouth to move? And so I'll leave a link to that video as well, right there. And what pro player is asking is, what if you have a moving head from left to right and need to lip sync, then what? Most online tutorials just show only static face with lip sync. And it's perfect timing because I've been working on something like that for this story time animation. But first, let's hit this intro. And welcome back everyone. Okay, so going back to the question that Pro Player had, basically what they're trying to do is they want to do animation with the character looking in one direction and then when you turn the head they want the they want the lip syncing to continue when you move in this direction when i made my cartoon character i really like the way he looks when he looks to the left and when he looks to the right but when the character looks straight ahead i don't like that and a lot of times you won't see that in the cartoons that you're watching just take note a lot of times the camera or the characters are looking just a little bit off center because when someone is staring at you directly it's a little uncomfortable so they want to show that they're interacting with the with the environment and all the characters in the room or whatever in the scene right so uh you'll always see me doing that I always have my character kind of looking off to the side because it's a little more comfortable. It's not as threatening. Does that make sense? When I make the head turn, I hide it. And there's this old traditional animation technique called smearing. Smearing is a lot like a motion blur, but it almost disassembles the character just to show a very fast motion, right? And so I took a couple seconds and I, I researched a proper definition for cartoon smearing. I'll leave the links to this website in the video description. Idea Rocket says, what is an animation smear? Unlike traditional movement in animation, which uses keyframes to plot the beginning and end points and in between frames to create an illusion of movement, a smear depicts one quick blur of motion in a single frame. And that is what is key here. Doing a cartoon smear is a lot of fun, but you have to show it in just the perfect amount of time. Otherwise it looks really weird and it doesn't quite fit the animation that you're doing. If you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow hashtag cartoon smear. We see here, there's the Simpsons are here. Bugs Bunny is here and a lot of the real Get droopy. A lot of the old cartoons use this all the time just to help sell the fast motion. There's a little bit of a difference between a smear and a motion blur. A motion blur is if you take a, a, an item and you move it real fast, it doesn't really change all that much. There's just some blur to it to help sell that it's moving really fast. A smear would probably even be a notch above that. Like it's moving so fast that it comes apart and then it comes back together over here on this side. And we see here one of the parents of the fairly odd parents is completely discombobulated. It's just a smear, just kind of just, if you had an image like this, just sitting somewhere, people would be wondering what happened to you. And all it is, is it looks like the mom probably is moving into a helicopter parent, the kid, here's Homer. You see how his body just doesn't really make sense, but you're only going to show this for like maybe one or two frames. Bugs Bunny only has two eyes, but in this picture he has one, two, three, four, 
like and a couple in the faded in the back he's got about six eyes but what he's doing is he's turning his head really fast i suggest following this hashtag hashtag cartoon smear another account on instagram that i suggest you guys follow if you're interested in doing these cartoon smears and breaking things down is this animation underscore resources this is a really cool account that has videos that they'll show you the the original video in the original pacing and then they slow it way down so you can take a look at the smears and the way i use this as a tool is i'll take something and i'll watch it and then you know in on my ipad or whatever i'll try to recreate that effect now that we understand what a cartoon smear is and how I use it, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the mouth and then do the lip sync and kind of expedite the process between having this head talking and this head talking because we do have two separate heads. I'll leave a link to the previous videos that talk about doing the auto lip syncing and I did the auto lip syncing on this just to kind of, again, I'm trying to hurry up and get this uh, story time animation done so I'm using as many automated things as possible so if it looks a little weird it's because I'm I'm honestly I'm working on my OCD and so I let the program do all the lip syncing and I just hit auto lip sync and just to be absolutely clear what I have is a graphic symbol with a graphic symbol inside to help illustrate my point with this graphic symbol and this graphic symbol, this one is called mouth and it has all of the artwork for all of the mouth shapes, right? And then I have an animated mouth and that is what uses the artwork from this graphic symbol, right? Both of them are graphic symbols. This one has the artwork, this one has the auto lip syncing. Let me show you the difference. So here we have mouth, if I double click it, here are all the mouth shapes that we talked about before. Now let's take a look at this graphic symbol, which I have named mouth animated, right? So I just took the mouth symbol, dropped it in here, added another layer, called it audio. And I come over here and in the uh, properties panel, I'm able to come to the sound section of this and just say baller mixdown.aif. Ignore this mouth for now. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna come over to my library and grab my mouth and drop it into place. If I go to the object tab on the properties menu, what I'm gonna do is come over here and make sure that play single frame is selected. Now that we have that graphic symbol set to play only one frame, what I'm gonna do is click lip syncing. And this is the panel that's gonna let you determine which frame goes to which mouth shape or mouth sound actually is a better way to say that. And then I'm going to click on the layer that has the audio. And here you see I have a layer set to audio. I'm gonna click done and then it's gonna process and we see that it has done all of the auto lip syncing. Okay, so since I don't need that, I'm gonna delete that. And again, I have other videos that we've had that I'll link in this video so you can take a look at all of this stuff. This is supposed to be just like a quick refresher. Let's go back to the head. I'm gonna double click and let's pretend like this mouth layer doesn't exist. I'm gonna grab mouth animated and drop it into place. And then if we drag, we see, we see that the animation is still done. And once your mouth is animated in one direction, obviously, if you're looking in the opposite direction, all you would have to do, let's go up into this head here. If I go in here and I do the same thing and drop a mouth in here, you see how the mouth is backwards? All I have to do is right click, go up to transform, flip horizontal, and then put it into place. So, so far we have our cartoon character looking towards his right and he's talking and then he's going to turn his head and he's going to continue talking. And this is where the animation smear comes in. So let's take a look. This is the movement that we're looking for. What I want to do is hide the fact that he's going from this position to this position in such a fast way. And this is the animation smear that I created. And you can notice 
how his mouth is stretched way out. He's got a whole bunch of eyeballs and a whole bunch of pupils and everything. And even the baseball cap is kind of like mushed and melted all together. And that is on purpose because this is the effect that I'm going for. It, it, it really does smooth out that animation or that head turn. And quite honest, see that? It's super subtle and it helps smooth out that, that head turn. I just, I really like this technique. I'm a big fan of it. And quite honestly. And since we have the, the same mouth in two completely separate graphic symbols, what happens is if we click on this keyframe here and click on that head, I'm gonna go over to the properties panel and we see that looping. It's actually, it's set to play and the first frame, so where this graphic symbol is going to pick up, it's going to be on frame 162, which if we look over here, it's on 162. So that's where we want that head to pick up. And so the playhead within that graphic symbol will pick up on frame 162 and then continue playing all the way through. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, anyone that might be looking to get into storytelling using animation and video. I try to be here every week with new content. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And with that, my friends, I wish you nothing but good health and peace, and I will see you in the next video. See you later.